Hey guys, and welcome to flight number two in the SPAD 13.C1. Uh, this is Rise of Flight, and I hope you guys enjoy this video. Uh, just still kind of working out the cranks with my recording uh, volume settings and things like that. I hope you guys can hear me a lot better now. Uh, we're going to take another flight in the SPAD, go out, maybe do some aerial combat, and then come back in. So, hope you guys enjoy this video. Let's get her started up. And starting up is really not difficult. Pretty much there's a uh, ignition key. And if it doesn't start on the first time, it'll give you a few more times to do that. So uh, let's go ahead and take off. Let's take a look at the windsock real quick. And it looks like the wind is in front of us. So you always want to you always want to take off from the small end to the big end. Uh, or in other words, the windsock should be pointing towards you. Uh, whenever you take off, so we're a very light wind right now. I think it's only about four or five miles per hour. And uh, we'll check the uh, radiator settings real quick. Let's see if I can get it on. It's left windows. G is for the gauges. On the lower right hand corner, you can see the that's the radiator closed and the radiator full open. And then you also have the mixture control which controls the ratio of fuel to air mixture um, in the engine and really that's only necessary at above 3,000 feet I, I don't know if the World War One guys really use that as a uh, as a kind of uh, a guide 3,000 feet I know we use that today you should lean at 3,000 but uh, I'm sure if they went up to much higher altitudes like above 10 and, and 15,000 feet they would certainly be aware of that because the engine does run rough if you have it over enriched. It also aids in your engine cooling is that little red bar on the lower right hand corner. Alright so let's go ahead and uh, I'll disable the gauges here. Let's go ahead and take off. Very short takeoff roll. We'll give it full power here. No brakes in this aircraft whatsoever. Give it full left rudder. And start looking up at the clouds, make sure I'm going in a straight line here. Alright, still rolling here. And tails up. It doesn't take much to take this baby off, so we'll go ahead and pull up. And we're off to the races. Alright, very nice. And again, just a beautiful flight model. <laughs> just gives you the, an amazing sensation of flight and we'll go ahead and I'll, I'll check the map here we're gonna head straight towards the uh, city I think it's called the Rommel or something like that uh, to, uh, on the river edge there and we're gonna find some enemy aircraft so this is one of the quick start missions and you basically pick the aircraft that you have there's a number of scenarios you can see on the lower right hand corner of the map there there's a uh, ship attack, the convoy we did last time. You can attack some artillery, some balloons down there at the south, and uh, enemy aircraft as well as a train. So there's a few scenarios that they kind of just put you through uh, just to kind of fly around and get a feel for the aircraft. Let's climb up, get some altitude, and uh, we'll come back when I'm actually over the city. Alright guys, so here we are approaching the uh, major city on the front here, on the western front. And uh, pretty big city, it does impact your frame rate somewhat. And even though this game, our flight simulator came out a few years ago, uh, it's still not for the uh, faint of heart as far as CPU performance. It still kind of sucks the life out of your <laughs> out of your systems, like any other simulators, Arma 2. Uh, aisle 2, uh, it's still very taxing, DCS, etc. So just be aware of that if you want to try this out. Alright, so let's look for enemy aircraft and hopefully we get into dogfight here. I'll show you what that looks like. And this is what one of the air enemy aircraft looks like. Let's see if we can engage this guy. Okay, so I just spotted him down there. And I am going to try and and just get on a six basically 
these fights can be pretty grueling in that you get into these uh, pretty wild turning fights. Alright, this guy's engaging me effectively here. Alright, so he's clearly on my six here. I'm going to try to turn. Oh, looks like he got an engine hit here. That's You got some oil spewing. I'm going to try a... Uh, I'm going to try to run here for a little bit. And I'll try a hard jink into him. Alright, looks like he got some good hits. I'm definitely leaking some oil here. So you do get into these prolonged turning fights in this, and it's just the nature of the, the beast. There was very slow engagement speeds so you kinda get into these uh, turning fights and you can't it's hard to get out of them alright definitely leaking oil here but I'm gonna stay in the fight and try to get around and get this guy Oh, I can feel the engine losing power here. Not sure that I want to maneuver much anymore here. I'll turn back into him just to be on the uh, aggressive side. I think he actually crashed, so that's kind of crazy. All right. <laughs> And that does happen sometimes. He did crash. All right. Wasn't the best fight, but uh, definitely got an RTB here. So I'll head westbound. I th do have a compass down there, which uh, works decently well. There's westbound. So I know we're heading westbound, and if I look at my map, I'm just going to head back to, uh, to base. Hopefully we'll make it. i try to get some altitude up here. Let's take a look at the aircraft, see what's going on fit. Alright. Looks like I'm smoking just a little bit. I'll try to get it back to base and maybe we'll uh, come back out. Alright, well my engine's pretty much crackling and clickling. So that means it's probably going to lock up because I'm losing oil. Looks like we're going to have to land. Let's get an emergency landing here. And my pilot isn't responding too well here. Alright. Looks like I survived this crash, but I'm kind of hurt. Alright, we're going to go back to base, take off, and uh, hopefully try again here. Alright, so here we go again. And we'll take off and head back out to the front. Try it again. That is a huge wooden propeller on the front of that aircraft. That thing is absolutely massive. It's, you know, before metal was really incorporated in, into uh, propellers, and this is all fabric and, and wood and wires. It's pretty amazing, the, uh, the forefront of aviation. Uh, truly, talk about flying one of these things would be just the most surreal experience as far as experiencing true flight, wind in your face, light. Uh, fabric aircraft, feeling everything that the airplane does. It'd be truly amazing. Alright, it's finally got a good start. We'll take off here. And he did need a ton of left rudder to keep her straight. A little bit of forward elevator. Push the, push the uh, stick down just a little bit. And when you have enough flying speed, she'll just lift off the ground. Very nice. And there's our base all the way back there. Very nice terrains and rise of flight. And I just want to show you these balloons real quick. This guy's uh, using a telescope. This guy has binoculars. They're basically used to watch the front and these observation balloons were Pretty effective in uh, intelligence gathering during the First World War. Alright, so here we are again, crossing the river. 
Anna entering enemy territory. Looks like we got a Fokker enemy aircraft. And one thing I notice is that it's very difficult to spot enemy aircraft, much like it probably was during World War One. There's almost a, a chance meeting, and you could certainly have uh, aircraft in the air, but you might never encounter them. Alright, so I finally spotted this guy. He's in the sun. Alright. Fight's on, fight's on. Now, Fokker's had much better low speed handling because of that tri-wing, but the uh, the biplane's advantage is that they actually had the, sp the speed, so they could outrun these things. They could basically extend away from them, and you could either climb and come back down on them, or you could simply go back head on with them. So really the uh, even though von Richthofen flew the triplane uh, it was certainly uh, could certainly turn tighter but the SPAD was able to pick where the fight occurred and he could always run away from the fight if he needed to because it just had the speed advantage. That extra ring even though it gave incredible maneuverability and, and uh, German pilots were able to execute some amazing stunts in them like that. <laughs> they uh, they didn't have the speed advantage. And uh, one of the old sayings, even to this day, of uh, dogfighting is that speed is life. So whoever has the most speed, if you can manage that energy well, you can typically win the fight. So I'm going to stop turning with this guy and just climb. Turn into him a little bit. Use my speed advantage to climb above him. Let him bleed out with maneuvering. And now you can see that I'm on his six. Just by uh, managing speed and energy well. That third wing would create an immense amount of drag. And that's why they, uh, they didn't have uh, very good speed. But the uh, biplanes actually did really well. Yeah, climb above the sky just a little bit. Do, an, do a high yo-yo. And dig into him a little bit here. You can see his amazing low speed uh, capability here. Alright, so I'm slowly inching up, catching up to this guy, just using my speed advantage. And he is clearly using his uh, maneuverability to try to out turn. All right. Oh. He has much better slow speed handling than I do, but once uh, enemies on your six, it's very hard to knock them off. Okay, I need to extend a little bit here, and that means just kind of level out a little bit. Stop pulling G. Stop turning so quickly, and use my speed advantage. Okay, so now he's using his maneuvering. I'm gonna go ahead and extend. Turn back into him as I do that. Oh, let's put some G on it real quick. All right, it looks like might be losing him right here. All right, go ahead and extend. I know I can outrun him, so I'm gonna use that to my advantage. And see how the Spad can simply break away from the fight due to its speed. He's way back there uh, because has less drag so what I can do here just extend away from him use my speed advantage and now I can and now I can turn back into him and go head on all right there he goes again Break away from the fight. All 
Alright, extend away from him again. And this time I'm going to try slow climb. With a nice little turn in there. There he is all the way back there. Try to get a little bit of altitude advantage here if I can. Alright, let's turn back into him. Try to fight. Okay, let's see. Okay, not sure where he went. There he is. Alright, let's turn hard into him. Alright. That was a mistake. He lost sight just for a split second. Let's pull into him. If he keeps hard maneuvering. Alright, there he goes. I'm going to go high yo yo. Just climb and turn. Gain some altitude and swoop down. I'm going to extend here just a little bit. I know he can outturn me, so I'm going to continue this high yo-yo maneuver to gain altitude. Come back down on him. Okay, now I'm going to do low yo-yo, which means I'm going to get the nose down. And get some more speed here. Okay, again, he's outturning me, so I'm going to break off. And extend the way. So the spad was very... Uh, In the hands of a right pilot who understood the tactics, he knew that he could always break away from the fight. And uh, what the triplane, the German triplanes, and uh, actually the uh, British had some triplanes as well, they didn't have the advantage to pick when they could leave a fight and when they wanted to actually engage. So, uh, try high yo yo again. Let's break into him. He's taking some good shots there. Alright, turning back in the fight here. Alright, we're going to go head on. There he is. You can definitely see the advantages of both aircraft playing out here. Okay. If he continues that climb, I know I can beat him. This guy's a really good pilot. And you kind of get into these scenarios where you're just turning, turning, turning with these guys. Okay, can't turn with him. Got to break away. Alright, going head on again here. So I'm kind of trying a slashing attack tactic, even though I don't have the altitude advantage. I, uh, I can keep reversing and going, doing some head-on shots with him. Well, he's really slow. Alright, here we go. Okay, I'm going to try some of them. Oh! Getting in a turning fight again. Let's extend out. So you really got to play your your aircraft's advantage to his weaknesses. And I'm just using speed and climbing against his turning. If I get in a turning fight with him, he's going to win every time. Okay, so extend it again. And now we're going to go head on. Alright, so we just pass each other. Coming back around now. Let's see if we can find this guy. There he is. Just 
still looking for him. Man, this is a tough fight. back into the sky. There he is. Alright, now I'm just getting aggressive here. Oh, it looks like he dug in. Oh, and that's just how it went in World War II. Alright. Oh man, got a little too aggressive there. And there's his aircraft down on the ground. Fortunately for him, that's his last day flying. Alright, let's RTB and hopefully we can save this crate. And you can see there, you remember I told you that that's probably our temperature. Our engine's uh, overheating, it's over. I'm assuming that's Celsius, 100 degrees. Um, that's what happens when we leak oil, that it's not able to cool the engine and eventually it'll uh, seize up because all the uh, oil's gone and, and it overheats. So hopefully we'll kind of finesse it back to base and hopefully we can make it back. All right, I can hear the engine start to uh, wind down here. I know that it's it's really struggling. Probably metal grinding against metal because of all that oil that we lost. So we're just gonna try to try to bring it down uh, at the airfield. Hopefully, get some repairs done. Do a nice turn here. Don't have a whole lot of power, but all right. And we'll turn off the engine. Alright guys. Made it back. Hope you guys enjoyed that mission. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.